Messages that are sent in one super step arrive in the next. So how are we going to use these keys concepts? The trick here is to think like a vertex. You don't write a mapper and reducer. Instead, you implement an abstract class. Um, is this still abstract? I think now it's actual real class. Now you override the real class that's a vertex. So how do you think like a vertex? What can you do with a vertex? Well, a vertex, a vertex has a value. So you can set and change your own value. A vertex has connections. It has edges out to other people. So you can get those. You can make new ones. Uh, and as I said, the way that you communicate with other vertices is to send them a message. So you can send a message to any vertex you would like. Uh, if you know its ID, that's great. Otherwise, you're going to have to find it out by talking to another vertex. So that's what vertices can do. And what you make them do to do interesting things is you make them compute. That's the main method that you're going to fill out. Uh, it takes in a list of messages that you've gotten in that super step. And once you have that message, uh, you'll be called every super step, and you can decide what to do. Two interesting things that you can do in there is, one, find out which super step you're on. And two, you can vote to halt. This is how the algorithm actually ends itself. Once every vertex in the algorithm votes to halt, then the, map, then the computation is finished. Any questions so far? So what does this look like in practice? BSP revenge the messages. Uh, people that are familiar with bulk synchronization processing will recognize this as a certain type of it. Uh, we have a lot of processing going on, and we're going to move in bulk uh, synchronized step. So here we're looking at four super steps. Uh, we have four vertices. Uh, in super step zero, they all do some computing, and some of them send some new messages. Vertex one sends a message over to vertex three, and vertex uh, three sends a message over to vertex two. All of those messages arrive in super step one. Once we get to super step one, the first vert vertex votes to halt. So it's effectively out of the game. That's, left, that's leaving vertex two, vertex three, vertex four to send more messages around. Vertex, the, ver the messages that get sent in one get delivered in two, uh, in, in super step two, at which point vertex three votes to halt as well, leaving just vertex two and vertex four to send some more messages before they both decide to halt. Uh, you can see that in super step two, vertex four doesn't actually send any messages but it's still, uh, or vote to halt, it just does its thing. This is the overall structure of a giraffe program. Bunch of vertices computing something, sending messages to each other until they all get bored and quit. So there's a couple examples that we can look at. The first example is to go ahead and find the max value in an algorithm. This is the actual uh, giraffe code. You can see we've got public class, maximum value in graph. Uh, we're extending edge list vertex. That vertex is going to maintain its edge lists in uh, its edges in a list. That allows you to add and change them very quickly. You can also change them in a hash map, which gives you better lookup time. Uh, we are parameterized over what value we're going to have. That's the text. With well, the messages that we're going to send, the values of our edges, uh, and what we're actually going to call it. That's the doubles in this case. And again, we only have to actually override one method here, which is compute. The message iterator is going to be the list of values that we get from everybody else. And this algorithm is very simple. If, the first, if we're in the first super step, we just assume that we're the maximum, and we tell everybody that. That's all we do. Uh, every other super step after that, we're going to go through the list of messages that we've gotten and look for anybody that's bigger than us. And if we find somebody that is, we'll set that to our new value, and we'll send that message out to everybody else. Uh, if we don't find anybody that's bigger, then we think it's time to stop, and we will halt. So in this way, the maximum value in a graph is going to spread like a virus. A uh, pretty simple way of working with graphs. Uh, you'll notice that as the, graph prog as the algorithm progresses, uh, fewer messages are sent, which is nice. Uh, and it took us three super steps to do this versus doing it uh, in an MR job. Uh, for a very small graph like this, you know, this is very fast. For a larger graph, we'll also scale appropriately. Uh, the next example is PageRank. PageRank is the algorithm that uh, was originally the main driver for MapReduce uh, back at Google. And interestingly enough, even though it's a very important algorithm in general and for Google, it's very difficult to actually get right inside of MapReduce. Uh, it makes a really good interview question. Uh, and basically, the, value, the, the main goal of PageRank is to figure out your value in relationship to all the other vertices in the graph. 
And you do that by figuring out your initial value and sending out new values to everybody else. And you continue to do this for a certain number of steps. You take their values in, you recompute yours, and tell everybody what your new value is. Uh, here we do this. We take up all of our neighbor's values. We look at them, we figure out what our new one is, and then we set that to us. Here, instead of working for a certain amount of time uh, until we reach a, con a condition that we would like, we're just going to do this uh, a preset number of times. You can do page rank until it stabilizes at a value, but here in the configuration, we've set a super step count, and as soon as we reach that super step count, uh, we're going to vote to halt. Otherwise, we're going to keep doing this cycle of uh, taking in everybody else's value, adding it into our own, and sending it out again. So, uh, we're a new, pro we're a new uh, project, but we do have some bells and whistles already. Uh, one thing is aggregators. Unlike in MapReduce, we can have global state, and aggregators let us do that. Uh, aggregators can basically be a value that's, a, that's true across the whole graph. You can have a sum, so everybody will contribute uh, a number to that value, and in the next super step, you'll get the sum. Uh, minimum value, max per value, or you can also define your own. Uh, additionally, we have combiners. Combiners are very similar to what they are in MapReduce, which is that if you are going to send out a certain number of messages, you can provide us with an optional function that can transform n messages into a smaller number of messages. This saves time in either sending it over network or eventually we'll be able to also store these to disk between super steps. And while I've been badmouthing disk I.O. this whole time, there is actually some pretty big uses for it. Uh, mainly is that if you are doing a calculation requiring 10,000 super steps and you get to super step 9,999 and you crash, you don't want to have to rerun all 10,000 super steps. So on a user configurable basis, you are able to checkpoint or to write the state out to disk. And that way, if your algorithm crashes, you can restart at that point and not have to do all the recalculation. So that's how you use Giraffe. How's Giraffe actually built? Uh, there's three main components to any Giraffe job. First, like all self-respecting distributed systems, we have ZooKeeper. And ZooKeeper is where we keep all of our shared state. This is where the aggregators live. This is where who's actually still in the calculation lives. This is where everything you need to actually run is. The actual job itself is a map job, uh, is a MapReduce job. So we run as a standard MapReduce application with two types of mappers. There's going to be a single master. And that master is going to be the one that coordinates everybody. It's going to be monitoring to see who's done with a super step. It's going to be triggering everybody to start the next super step. It's going to be waiting for everybody to vote to halt. So we have one map that's a map master, and we have a lot of maps that are the workers. Uh, and those maintain several things. They, income, they maintain the messages that are to be delivered this super step. They actually call compute over some partition of the graph. Uh, we partition the graph either with a hash partition or with a range partition. It's up to you. And they keep all the messages that are going to go out in the next super step. So that during the next uh, uh, intermission between the super steps, they can send them out to everybody that needs them. And like I said, there's one master, and everybody else in the calculation is the worker. So this is one single map-only job. And it's a very, very badly behaved job. It's about the worst one you'll ever see. Uh, Giraffe requires that all of the mappers be up and running at the same time. It requires that all of the graph be able to fit into memory. So for instance, if you start up a, a, a Giraffe job that requires 1,000 workers, 1,000 mappers, uh, and you can only get 999 of them, uh, the actual job won't start until you get the last one. So you can actually hold up uh, everybody else behind you. So while this is done as a MapReduce job, it's a very, very bad one. OK, so if you want to run a map uh, Giraffe job, how do you go about doing that? Uh, we're trying to make this a, a little bit easier. It was pretty gnarly until recently. Uh, but we have our standard shell script. So anybody that's used to working with Hadoop, Pig, or Hive will be able to see how this works. Uh, you pass in your jar, and you tell it which class you actually want to run. That's the one that implements Vertex. Uh, you pass in how many workers you want. And again, a worker is equivalent to a mapper. Uh, unlike in MapReduce, where the number of maps that you get is defined by the input, here you have to explicitly define it yourself. So if you need to, you need to figure out enough mappers that will be able to hold your graph. Uh, and you'll actually get one more than this, because you also have to allocate one mapper to be uh, the master. Uh, we have different ways of getting the input in and out. Uh, 
it's becoming increasingly difficult to give these reasonable names. So for instance, in this case, we're going to read our text, our input as a text double double adjacency list vertex input format. Um, if you can come up with a better way of naming these, we would like to talk to you. Uh, but essentially what that's saying is that it's an adjacency list where the uh, value of the vertex is going to be double, the messages are going to, or, or, sorry, it's going to be text, the messages are going to be doubles, and the values are going to be doubles. Uh, you pass it in your input graph and your output format, which is very similar to this one. Uh, here we're just going to get the ID of the vertex and its value. We're not actually with the uh, ID with value text output format, so we won't get the value, all of the neighbors, all of the edges written out in the output as well. Uh, and you pass it in an output format, uh, an output uh, directory. So what does it look like when it's running? It looks like a standard MapReduce job, because it is a standard MapReduce job. Uh, in the middle there, there's graph giraffe timers that we've added. It tells you how long it took to run. I don't think those are very readable at that scale. Uh, it tells you how long each one of the super steps took. So uh, this was running on the maximum value graph, and each super step took about uh, one second to run. And we ran it for a total of uh, four super steps. Uh, there's also stats that are included. We have the aggregate edges, the super steps, the number of workers, uh, where, we super, where we checkpointed, number of messages, aggregate finished vertices, and aggregate vertices. So that's giraffe. That's where it is. Let's talk about what's actually happening. Uh, there's two big things to talk about in the giraffe world. One, uh, we are no longer an incubator project. We have graduated from Apache Incubator. Uh, I spent about two hours looking, for the, looking on the internet for a picture of a giraffe wearing a mortarboard. Uh, that does not exist, and it makes me very sad. Uh, but we are now in a full Apache project. Uh, this is significant. This means that we've demonstrated that we have grown a community, uh, as I talked about before, of people that are invested in the project and are going to make sure that it succeeds, even if any you know, fraction of us are no longer able to work on it. Uh, for those that might have been hesitant and standing on the sidelines to see how this turns out, I would invite you now to take another look, uh, because Giraffe is here, and it's a full project. Uh, the other thing that's happened recently, uh, we did our first release. Uh, 0 0.1, that was part of the incubation process. Uh, we've got a lot of good things there. The out-of-box experience, the bin slash giraffe, is now able to do. Uh, before you had to actually uh, create a whole new jar from the giraffe source code and upload that. Uh, we're doing much better about memory improvements. Because these graphs are supposed to be huge, uh, they can take up a lot of memory. Uh, we're figuring out exactly what it means to be a vertex and what it means to be a combiner. Uh, if, uh, if you're familiar with MapReduce's new API, we would like to avoid that type of schism. So we're trying to get it as right as we can right now. I really don't think we're there yet, but we're coming up with it. And we've got lots of uh, new file formats that you can work with. Uh, it's been a few months since version point 0 0.1, so it's probably time to look at version point 0.2. Uh, the biggest thing to talk about that is that we have a new RPC system. This is a very big improvement. Previously, the RPC system was basically the Hadoop RPC, which uh, works very well for Hadoop because generally, unless you're the name node of the job tracker, you're not talking to a lot of people at once. In a super step, you're going to be sending messages and opening connections to everybody else that you have a message for. Uh, and the Hadoop RPC requires uh, one thread per RPC connection which means that if you have 1,000 other workers, you have to open up 1,000 other threads, and you've just lost a gigabyte of space. Uh, if your mapper was only limited to a gigabyte of heap, you're kind of out of the game. Uh, so we've now moved our RPC system over to Netty, which should give us very improved uh, performance and scalability, uh, and should allow us to be able to take on even bigger graphs than we were before. Uh, we recently got committed a new patch that allows us to read and write data in and out of HBase, which is great. Uh, and we're also now supporting Hadoop 1.0. Uh, Hadoop's recently been on a release spree, uh, and so now we also have to make sure that we can support Hadoop 2.0, which is looking like we don't quite yet. Uh, but we can now support Hadoop 1.0, Hadoop with security, Hadoop 0.20. Uh, young project, so the future work actually has more items than the present work, which is nice. So we have improved the RPC by quite a bit, but I think there's still a lot to go. 
uh, especially if we're going to be able to handle the billions of vertices that uh, Google says they can do. So we're going to have to be able to come up with a way of basically scaling the graph no matter how big it is. Right now, if your graph can't fit in memory, uh, we do very badly. Uh, we should do better at least in gracefully shutting down. As part of that improved robustness means that we need to tolerate Zookeeper acting funny, we need to uh, uh, tolerate the master going away, workers going away, all of these different things. That right now, we don't do very well. Uh, the big thing that everybody wants to talk about is yarn. Uh, who here knows what yarn is? Oh, cool. Some people don't, good. So uh, yarn is the yet another resource negotiator. It's what MapReduce wrote when MapReduce needed to scale beyond its limits. And it allows, it's a pretty generic uh, container requester format for being able to run distributed applications. Uh, we're looking very hard at moving draft to it, uh, which means that we would no longer have to run as the worst MapReduce job ever. And we might be welcome on shared clusters, which right now is pretty much not gonna happen. Uh, this, is, uh, this works ongoing. Uh, right now I'm the main blocker for it because I've assigned it to myself and can't get to it. Uh, but it needs to get done, and once it does, draft will be much better for it. Uh, we do need to ways of getting data in and out of the system easier. Uh, giraffe is great as long as you're able to use it with your data. That means that we need to come up with some kind of system that's better than long, double, 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 triple adjacency list. Um, I think that we're running into some limitations on Java, uh, but we're still going to have to work around those. Monitoring and metrics. Uh, there's a lot that goes on in a giraffe system. We are very network intensive. Uh, we require a lot of coordination as a BSP model. Uh, we're going to need to be able to monitor this better so that we can turn this over to our ops teams and they're willing to support it. Right now it's essentially a black box beyond those few uh, metrics that you saw that were done as Hadoop counters. <coughs> Higher level languages. Writing MapReduce jobs is fun until you've written about your 10th MapReduce job. At that point you become very appreciative of things like Pig, Hive, Crunch, um, cascading. Uh, and there's definitely room for a uh, higher level language on top of Giraffe. Uh, one group at Stanford, I believe it is, is already working on one called Green Morrow. Uh, we're talking to them. That looks very interesting. Uh, but I'm hoping to see several more that might come in. Uh, and then there's playing nice with the rest of the ecosystem. So it should be possible to load your data, do some, load your data directly via H catalog, uh, store it back into H catalog. It should be able to schedule jobs uh, via Uzi or Azkaban. Azkaban is uh, LinkedIn's in-house uh, job scheduler. That's also open source. Uh, we should be able to play nice with HBase, which we can, but we should also be able to play nice with Pig. Uh, so integration with the whole rest of the community is going to be very important as well. Uh, that's it. I think I might be a bit early. And the last thing I wanted to say is we are a new community and we are looking for new contributors. Uh, if you go to bit.ly, newbie, Apache, giraffe issues, uh, you will find issues where you can get involved. If you've never been an open source contributor, we will welcome you. These are issues that are designed to get you introduced to Apache in general, but specifically giraffe. So if it sounds like something you'd like to work on, we'd love to talk to you. Uh, again, do that tomorrow because we've kind of run out right now and I have to create some new ones. Thank you. Okay, are there any questions for Jakob? See this I don't want to answer his question. Can you skip him? <laughs> yes, Steve. Jacob, if there are any events this week, are there any opportunities to learn more about Giraffe? Uh, there are events. Um, I don't know if people are able to get to them, though, and I'm being told that they can't. So, no, Steve, I'm afraid there aren't. Any more questions? So, one of the strengths of MapReduce is the ability to keep going in the failure of any particular mapper, right? That's a lot harder in those kind of algorithms. Are you guys looking at any ways to mitigate that or deal with that? Because especially as you scale out, a failure of a, any single node becomes just much more probable. Right, right now the failure model is that we would stop at a super step and start again using the count, uh, using the um, checkpointing. So in terms of a single, so you've got, you, check, you checkpoint every 10 steps, you're at 99, 
one mapper dies. Right now, we'd have to roll back to super step 90. Uh, it's a lot harder, like you said, to be able to super st to be able to do one little mapper because you basically have to roll back everybody, figure out what messages were destined for that mapper at that time, what its state was. So individual mappers failing is something that we need to do better at. But right now, our only answer is checkpointing. I was wondering, do you have any any stuff like shortest route calculation and all that stuff like out of the box? So there are a few standard algorithms. Uh, shortest path, I believe we do have an, al uh, an example for. Uh, there's also PageRank, which is, I, I ripped that directly from PageRank. Uh, and I think we have a couple others in the examples, but we're looking for more of them. OK, we still have time. Uh, Any rough benchmarks around size of graphs you can handle so far, and then like what you're targeting? Uh, so uh, one example graph that I was playing with on the old RPC system would work for about 400 mappers with 150 million objects before we ran into RPC issues. Uh, that's with the old RPC system. So I don't know what the new RPC system is. Uh, I expect it to be dramatically better than that. Uh, in terms of time, how long these algorithms took, uh, playing around with some algorithms that we have there, uh, porting them over to Giraffe was a 5x improvement over a standard map reduce iterative approach. Hi. Uh, could you give some examples of maybe a couple of people solving some real problems with Giraffe? as a solution? Uh, the question is examples of real uh, problems. It's a new project. So in terms of having a powered by page, we don't have one. I was just uh, thinking that that's probably a good time to do. Um, the subset of problems that Giraffe is going to be useful for is not nearly as big as MapReduce. But for those that it is useful for, things like PageRank uh, is going to be a huge improvement over. Uh, in terms of actual examples, I can't, I don't have any per se yet. Uh, Facebook's looking at it, Twitter is looking at it, uh, LinkedIn's looking at it. So all of the big social networks that are trying to solve these types of graph problems are definitely using it. I don't think it's gotten to the point yet where we're use any of us are using it in production. Sorry. New project, come and help. Yeah, one question. Um, you use your own RPC system in the next time and you have your zookeeper and map only jobs. Um, is there any use for Hadoop at all? Um, wouldn't you be better off because of de less dependencies if this would uh, stand alone uh, library for Yeah, so when uh, Giraffe was first being developed at Yahoo Research in 2010, uh, Yarn didn't exist yet. So forcing this into a MapReduce, map-only job was um, a cute trick that worked very well for getting Giraffe up and running, but it hobbles us more than anything now because you're having to fight with the fact that you're a mapper that's doing everything mappers shouldn't be trying to do. Uh, starting from scratch uh, might also have worked just as well. Um, I wasn't on the original team that started working on Giraffe, so I'm not sure why they didn't go that way. Uh, but once we have Yarn, which will allow us basically to res just uh, request the resources we needed from the grid and then do whatever we want with them, it'll work much easier. And uh, we're using um, Netty, so we're not exactly rolling our own RPC. Um, it's not starting from scratch in that case. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Okay, so thanks again, Jacob, for your overview of Giraffe. Thank you.